So a few more to practice with. We have a few less fractions in this example, but it still behaves the same. I need to clear out all of the denominators. In this case, I only have one. So what is my LCD between these three fractions? The LCD is x. So if I multiply every single term by x, what's happening with this one that we haven't seen yet? Let's figure it out. So I've got x times x, which gives me x squared. That's what we haven't seen. Now it's going from linear, one variable, one dimension, to quadratic. Now I have two. But we know how to handle those, so let's keep going. Next one, x divided by x, those will be gone. We'll be left with 6. And over here, negative 5 times x gives us negative 5x. So in order to solve quadratics, what do we need? Everything on one side having it set equal to 0. And we need our squared term to be positive. And it already is, so that tells me I should move negative 5x to the left instead of moving these over to this side. So x squared comes first, and now it will be positive 5x, positive 6, equal to 0. So we need a factor. I've got a 1 out on the front. And what about those signs? They're both positive, so that tells me these are both positive. And I need a combo to multiply to 6 and to 5. So what factors do we need? 2 and 3. Order doesn't matter. We could flip that around. So what does that mean for my x values? Either that first piece is equal to 0, and I get out negative 2. Or the second chunk is equal to 0, and we get out negative 3. Okay. And whenever we're dealing with quadratics, we want to check all of our answers to make sure it doesn't cause any problems down in that denominator. Because if I plug in 0 for x, what happens in this case? That term is undefined and we cause problems. So when we plug in negative 2 or negative 3, does it hold true? So let's check real quick. Let's check. The first one, when I plug in negative 2, I've got negative 2 plus 6 divided by negative 2. Is that equal to negative 5? So I've got negative 2 minus 3. Yes. That does equal negative 5. That one's verified. And the second, when we plug that one in, negative 3 plus 6 divided by negative 3, is that really equal to negative 5? Negative 3 minus 2. Yes, that one is true as well. So our solution set in this case contains both values, negative 2 and negative 3. So we need to get in the habit of checking our answers when we're dealing with a quadratic, higher power than just one. So let's take a look at this one. Again, what is my LCD in this case? Because we need to multiply everything by the LCD to clear out the fractions. So if I start with x minus 1 over here, what is my LCD missing now that this one has? Nothing. I've already taken into account one factor of x minus 1. So what happens when I multiply every single term by x minus 1? First one goes away. We've got x squared. And it's equal to what? 1. That one goes away as well. So again, we have a quadratic. So we need everything on one side equal to 0. And I want my squared term to be positive, so he's going to stay. 1 is going to move to the other side. And I've got a binomial. Two terms. Is it a difference of squares? It sure is. So we get x minus 1, x plus 1, order doesn't matter. So what does that mean for my x values? It's either going to be negative 1 or positive 1, but we need to check. We need to check and make sure 
We don't make any denominators become undefined. So as I plug in negative 1, what do I get out? Up top, negative 1 squared, positive, and I've got negative 1 minus 1 to give me negative 2. And we need to see, is that really equal to what over here? 1 over negative 2. Sure is. So that one's satisfied. And now checking x equal to positive 1. When I plug that in, what do I get up top? 1. What do I get down below? 0. Am I allowed to divide by 0? No. So that tells me x equal to 1 is out. The only thing that I can plug in that will make this true and not cause anything to be undefined is negative 1. So even though I had two possible solutions, we always need to check because we had to rule one out. So go ahead and take the problem on the next page, solve, check all of your answers to make sure you don't have any issues. So with your try, what was the LCD between those two fractions? Everything that's down below, x plus 2 and x plus 2. So when we multiply both sides of our equation by that value, what do we get out? On the left, we had x squared. On the right, we had 4. We have quadratic, so we need everything on one side. 4 had to move. And what did this factor into? Difference of squares with x and 2 as our terms. So what does that tell me for an x value? can either be negative 2 or positive 2 coming out. But when we go to check, what did you notice about these? When I plug in negative 2, does it cause any issues? So negative 2 squared will give me 4. But down below, what happens? Negative 2 plus 2, 0. So that one makes our fractions undefined. Can't use that one. When we plug in positive 2, does it make it true? So I've got 2 squared will give me 4, and 2 plus 2 gives me 4 down below. We need to check and see if that's really equal to 4 divided by 2 plus 2, which is 4. Oh yeah. The checks are usually that simple, but we need to be sure to check both solutions when we're dealing with a quadratic. Because in this case, we don't have two solutions. We only have one. The value we can plug in is 2. And the very last one that we're going to take a look at is a little bit larger. So what's the first thing that should happen? Okay, I've got factored term broken down as far, unfactored. So we want to be able to factor him first. And what does it break into? x squared minus 25 is difference of squares, x plus 5, x minus 5. So as we build our LCD, I know it has to be divisible by each of them, so I'm going to take my larger term to start with. And as we look, what is my LCD missing that this other term has? Nothing. We took that one to, into account. And what is my LCD missing that this one has? Nothing. I've already taken that one into account. So my LCD is that entire factor on the bottom over here. x squared minus 25. But I'm going to write it out in this factored form so I can easily see what's going to cancel. So as I multiply by my LCD, I've got x minus 5, x plus 5, x minus 5, x plus 5, x minus 5, x plus 5. So let's start to cancel out the terms, see what we're left with. So with my first one, that entire quantity, x minus 5, will go away. And what's left? I've got 3 times x plus 5. And we need the parentheses because it's times that entire quantity. Got rid of the fractions. Sweet. Next, what's going to cancel? x plus 5, x plus 5, and I've got 1 times x minus 5. 
So do I really need to write the 1? One? 1 times anything is itself. So coming on there, I've got x minus 5. And we don't need the parentheses in this case, but it's a good habit to get into. And last, x squared minus 25 has each of those factors involved. So that's going to cancel everything. And what are we left with in the numerator? 2. So now that all of our variables are up top, we can start to solve. And we need to distribute to get us there. So we're looking at 3x plus 15. And again, did these parentheses matter? Nope, I've just got a 1 on the outside. So we can drop those. And let's combine our like terms. 3x and 1 more gives me 4. 15 minus 5 gives me 10. And I have 2 over on the right. So it's linear, it's not quadratic like we saw before. We can handle these, no problem. So subtracting 10, looking at negative 8 on both sides, divide by 4, x is equal to negative 2. But we need to check. If I plug in negative 2 into the original, do I cause any of the denominators to explode? Is this solution even reasonable? So let's see. If I plug in negative 2 into x, I get a whole number there, whole number, whole number. So we're good. Solution set in that case is negative 2. And if we want to be very thorough, we can actually calculate the values out. But more often than not, we're just checking to see if any of those values cause one of the denominators to turn into 0.